Good day you bunch of heroes and pirates. We are going to start making a flipper knife. We have been in the market of selling, designing, making and selling high-end fidget sliders. That has been our entire business pretty much for the last two and a half years. We went from nothing to being definitely number one in the marketplace. We might even be number one, two and three, but perhaps just, <laughs> perhaps that's just my uh, arrogance on overdrive though. We are definitely number one though. Anyway, I am never one to stand still and the natural progression is a knife, a high-end flipper knife. It turns out knives are really, really hard. Fidget sliders were quite hard to get right. We've kind of perfected them, essentially perfected them over the last two and a half years. Now, I have attempted to make a knife four times in the past and I have failed, 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 failed on every single one of them. Mostly because it was always harder to <laughs> prototype, get something up and running than I thought it would be. And so ultimately on every single one of those knives, I had to stop, keep the business running. You know, business is business. You, you know, you've got expenses, you've got costs, you have to sell products. There's nothing you can do to avoid it. Number five. This is, this is, uh, I, I think we're gonna do it. As you can see, the blade's a drop point blade, the scales are plain. There's a lot more going on in this design than you may think, and I will explain that at a later date, but I thought I would just show you where it's at, what it's looking like, um, the pocket, pocket clip on the back. So we have this fixture that we've made, and made a couple of blade prototypes from. Making blades is hard, that's something I've come to learn. The real trick seems to be finding the order of the process, you know, like how much you machine off the blank, then harden, then machine again, and, you know, maybe machine again, maybe tumble, hard, like, temper, like, it's, it's, it's the, the order of the process, because the, one of the main things is that metal moves. So far we've taken a blade blank, we've surface ground it, we then machine each side of the blade, one like this, one like this. This is an old prototype. And then we, oh, I can, you know what? I can't even remember the process. Um, I've been off for a week kind of for Christmas. So um, what I'll do is I'll go through the process in more depth at a later date because I'm trying to go by memory and it is failing miserably. It is a little bit loud in here. So hopefully the sound's coming through okay. But the plan for today is this. We have some pre-made aluminium fixture plates. Because we have a horizontal four axis milling machine with a pallet changer, we have what's called tombstones. So instead of milling with a spindle, need another hand, instead of the, the spindle milling X, Y, Z, it mills X, Y, Z, and then you've also got a fourth axis and on there is what's called a tombstone. On our tombstone we designed and made what's called, a, we call it an octagon, it's an eight-sided tombstone and so we can put up to eight plates on the side. So like I said we've made a few prototypes, I want to make some changes, more information will be forthcoming as, as we progress but uh, I just want to make these really rough and ready videos, just take you along with the journey, I'm going to stumble over my words, it's going to be messy, the editing is going to be garbage, doesn't matter. Uh, the videos will be short as well initially. Just, I just need to share this with you. So those blades are meant to be 3.8 millimeters thick. And as you can see, 3.8 on one side, 3.81 on the other side. That's pretty good. That's a hundredth of a millimeter, or I don't know what it is for in inches for you American Imperial folks, uh, but I'll put it in the video right here. So that's that's good. That's a really nice tolerance. You need to ensure you got a good foundation, good thickness of material, all that sort of good stuff. The surface of this seems quite smooth, looks quite smooth, but I think we'll have a closer look. Right here is a microscope, 
we are not messing around. Uh, we are really, really making a knife this time. This is a. Uh, this is this is the real deal. So that that edge there, that's a water jet cut edge. So we we start with a sheet of I think this is S90V, I believe, um, solid sheet or solid bar, and we water jet cut out the blank. It's actually a little bit harder to see the the rough surface than I thought it would be. Like I know it's rough. I can feel my fingernail rubbing across it, but through this through this microscope, it just looks kind of. I don't know, liney. So uh, anyway, that's that's a bit of a fail, really. So I'm almost ready to start machining the fixture for the blade, but we have error messages on the machine. I don't know, some it's broken down in some way, which is very very rare for this machine. Nobody's working here in New Zealand. Um, it's it's a, you know it's our summer holidays as well as Christmas time, so. Uh, when will it be fixed? I don't know. Uh, luckily, I have another machine I can use, so it's not going to stop us. I have a really selfish reason for sharing this knife making process with you. And the reason for that is, I think there's a lack of appreciation for how things are done and, you know, what it costs to make stuff. You know, we're all so used to, to products coming from China at a really low price, and I absolutely count myself in that as well. I mean, I talked earlier about the fidget sliders we make. You can get ones from China for less than $100. Ours are, you know, 200, 250, you know, 300, 350 if you're going for the, you know, sort of zirconium, that kind of thing. It's just the nature of it, you know? Um, but I think, I think if I can share enough with you, if you can see the details, see what it takes, it's a double whammy because you, you, you understand what it takes, in this case, to make a knife. And you sort of get to know the process. It, it sort of, you become intimate with it. That doesn't sound too weird. You appreciate the work that goes in, the time it takes, the detail, and you know, you, you will hopefully understand every, every little bit of it, every, every part of it. And that's what I'm hoping to do here. And like I said, the videos are gonna be ugly, messy, <laughs> background noises, birds tweeting, badly edited, but that's what it is, you know. You, uh, doesn't matter. Better that than nothing, I reckon. And with that, I'm going to leave you with what I think is an appropriate quote. It is by Theodore Roosevelt. And he said, in any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing you can do is the wrong thing. And the worst thing you can do is nothing.